How's everybody doing? It's time for a reaction video. Today I'll be doing a reaction on a World War I film that looks like it's coming out this year in 2024 called Before Dawn about Australian and New Zealand troops called Anzacs during the First World War. A little unknown story and not really shared a lot about these type of soldiers during the First World War and where they were from. I'm really interested in it. Those of you that know me know that I love this time period in history and really like to learn a lot more about it, especially these soldiers from down under that are often forgotten. So let's take a look and see what, uh, what the movie's all about. Let's get to it. Here they come! So, you're buggering off to the war with legs and Don? Very interesting that we see this in the beginning of the, the trailer, that uh, they're in World War I, but it looks like this is a home front flashback scene, and they're sheep farming. Uh, for those of you that aren't really familiar with Australia or New Zealand, uh, at, it originally was founded as a penal colony for uh, Europeans, mainly the English, to send like what they saw as the dregs of society. A lot of criminals went there, a lot of lower class uh, citizens, and they used these uh, criminals or people that didn't have a lot of money to try to populate Australia and New Zealand, and it was a prison colony for many, many years. And what you're seeing is that, you know, with the sheep and, and the cattle, this is how a lot of these people down at that time period in Australia or New Zealand made their living was by farming or working some sort of agriculture or working some sort of, you know, uh, livestock uh, li lifestyle. And it was really coming of age as, as Australia was starting to se separate and, from its past history of being just a penal colony and becoming a country out on its own. I can shoot. I think I'll be valuable. You're valuable here, Jim. We'll come to your farm when this all blows over, eh? It's not what it's cracked up to be. Get down! And what was the war? Dad, you boys want to go there? Bullet, shell, gas? Yeah, I'll be going home, thank you very much. So you can get married. Piss off. Some interesting facts is that mo most people don't realize that Australia is the only country that has gone to war alongside the United States since its ex inception in about the 1890s. So every time we've gone to war, whether it's be the First World War, the Second World War, Korea, Vietnam, uh, Desert Storm, Iraq, Afghanistan, there has always been Australian or New Zealand troops that have served with American uh, forces. And there's a lot to be said there because just like Australia and New Zealand were used as basically penal colonies, the United States was also a place for a lot of outcasts from Europe. So we have a lot in common with the people of Australia and New Zealand and our origins of being basically the misfits out of Europe to start a country. I'm gonna be his best man. Yeah, if he's lucky. If we beat the Germans here, they'll run all the way back to Germany. We win this together. If you take a look at the hats that these uh, soldiers are wearing, this is kind of like a bush hat. And the American army had a lot of the similarities to these troops when they first went into combat as well. The American army used uh, what they called a campaign hat, which was basically like a drill sergeant's hat today that you see in the military. And we didn't have a helmet. And a lot of the Australians didn't have helmets either. And eventually we adapted what was called the Kelly helmet. And you'll see the uh, later in, the, in uh, the war, the U.S. does away with the campaign hat and goes right to the helmet to protect soldiers from incoming artillery or bullets or debris flying around. So very interesting to see this that the Australians also had this type of headgear. We go home together. Here we go. Three, two, one. Lost me! Come on, Jim! I'm sorry about you, mate. The Western Front in the First World War is one of the most horrific places 
that you could be in the history of mankind. You, you can see in some of the combat scenes earlier, or even in this scene here where you have, looks like the rain, uh, you were not only exposed to enemy fire, but you were exposed to trench rats, which were rats that got in and would gnaw on you. Uh, when you were sleeping, a lot of soldiers have accounts of being asleep and then waking up to be rats all over them, maybe biting them. Uh, trench foot, which caused problems with your feet from wetness or cold, uh, pneumonia, sickness, uh, cave collapse, you name it. These guys faced it in the trenches. It was a very horrific thing. But one thing to keep in mind is that during the First World War, the... the not all the fighting was on the Western Front. Most people think that there was just a trench line across Europe, and that is the only place that the fighting took place, which couldn't be further from the truth. There was fighting in um, Africa. There was fighting in the Middle East. There was fighting on the ocean. There was fighting in Russia. It was all over. It was truly a global war, but the Western Front gets most of the attention. Right. They seem like good fellas. Weren't you supposed to be watching them? I'm sorry, Nichols. This is your fault! Get down! Help me! Do you hear that? Sit down. You're putting us all in danger. The artillery in the First World War was the number one killer. You saw an explosion there in the background. Uh, more than bullets, more than gas, more than uh, bayonets. Artillery was the number one killer. There were times that artillery barrages would go for days, weeks, even months before an assault. And this caused a lot of traumatic brain injury. And you'll see videos of soldiers during the First World War that are just standing there shaking and quivering and, you know, uncontrollably. And what that is, is a lot of times is exposure to constant artillery barrages going off next to their head and damaging their brain and their psyche. Now we have. Uh, more education when it comes to that and when veterans return from home from war but at that time shell shock as they called it was was not really a learnable thing that medical science hadn't really advanced to the point of learning about this a lot of these men came home from the first world war and were stuck in asylums and never lived a normal life again Volunteers! Let's go. Get down! Hold the bloody line! Interesting point is that these soldiers, even though they were from Australia, were still dressed in British uniforms. And what you'll see is a lot of Commonwealth soldiers from all over the globe dressed in British uniforms. You would think, well, they're a different country, they might wear a different combat uniform. But these soldiers, except for maybe some minor uh, alterations to their uniforms, maybe some patches or you know headgear like we saw earlier uh, that's distinctively Australian, they were wearing the same uniforms as soldiers from Canada or the Bahamas or England itself. So soldiers uh, for the British and the British Commonwealth forces, for the most part, dressed exactly the same when they went into battle and carried basically the same weapon, which was the, which was the uh, Enfield, the British Enfield. Let's go. No, I can't. Come on, Nichols. No! really thought we'd be on by now. Wow. Wow. What a good-looking film. I think I will be definitely checking this out. If you want to learn more about the First World War, uh, you know, I don't always say go to movies and, and take that as historical knowledge, but definitely check this out. It's great to see that after all these years, there are movies coming out about the First World War, not just the Second World War, the Civil War. Uh, these films definitely need to be made and these stories definitely uh, need to be told. If you like what you saw, make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and we will see you next time.